This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Now, this has been stirring for about 14 and a half hours. It's still yellow, though. I mean, it's definitely turned white. But the last time I did this one, I didn't stir it that much. I barely started at all, and I just left it overnight. It had all turned brown. I mean, at first it had turned white, like it's starting to do, you know, like it's doing now, half of it's white, half of it's yellow. But then when I left it overnight, when I woke up, it was like, brown. it was a gray color. This has no gray to it, really. So, and another thing is, is this much, you know, I mean, there's my cup. Maybe about that much of the liquid, the diethyl ether, has evaporated because I have this container open. So what I may do is put some cellophane over this to block some of the opening away with, and hopefully not get the drill bit sucking it up, twisting the cellophane around. Leave a big enough hole for the drill bit, and that's it. You can see how I got this cellophane. Just have a little hole. You know, I put three pieces around it to make like a triangle hole so that the thing could stick. Because everything was evaporating too much. I've evaporated probably an inch of diethyl ether out of there. I'm actually in the process right now of making some more ether because I ran out. So anyways, so I'll get back to you and let you know how, how you know, how long I start for again. I'm going to keep it at cold though. I'm not going to let it warm up to room temp. Another thing is, is that the one thing I've done different too is I've done this in the dark. Last time I pretty much left it in the light. I didn't keep it in the light the whole time, but I didn't didn't keep it in the dark the whole time. There's most of the time I was stirring at the top of it had a little hole in it for the light to go through. Um, that may have, you know, screwed up my reaction also. Yeah, I looked up to see what color. Um, silver bromide is and this is a off-white yellow you know what i mean it's a slight white i mean a slight yellow uh whitish color um i thought it was gray the last experiment i did this i did the video i think i put too much light on it and that's why it turned gray turning some of it into silver and bromide um because this it isn't really turning gray this time it's still staying a nice yellow whatever um, but I kept doing this totally in the dark, not even, you know, except for filming and checking on it, always in the dark. So anyways, it's been stirring for a long time now, over, over about 30 hours probably or something like that. So I'm going to, I have some ethanolic, it's azeotrope uh, ethanol and it's uh, silver nitrate, not nitrite, nitrate. Uh, you can see it's soluble. I'm going to take a little sample here. And put it inside here. All right, now I'm going to shake it around and see if anything precips. Now, if something precips out, you're making the ester, and that's what's precipping out, I think. Okay, I'm going to have to give this a while to see. Starting to think nothing's nothing's precipping out. I don't know if you can see that good on camera. You probably can't. But there's no particles or anything. I'm gonna have to give this like 10 minutes. I'm gonna cap it so it doesn't evaporate. And uh, and then I will let it sit here and come back to it in like 15 minutes. Cause I don't think it's done yet. Yeah been five minutes and as you can see it is totally cloudy <laughs> so it is definitely not done okay if it was done there you know the reason why that happened is because there's some kind of ethyl bromide in there so obviously it's not done even though it's been about 30 hours of stirring so I'm going to keep stirring it I'm going to stir this thing for freaking three days tops because uh, that's the instructions and we'll see I'm tired of this
not knowing. I've gone this far, and this this thing. Remember, do not use this. Uh, this drill like this. This is not the way you do stuff. Like I said, you need the brushless uh, whatever so that you can uh, not have any sparks. This is very unsafe. This diethylether is, you know, evaporating here. It's coming up to the thing. See, it's like see, it, it's like maybe 10 degrees in this room, though. It's not like I'm in a, in a, in a you know, heated room. This room is like 5 degrees, 10 degrees. So, you know what I mean? Uh... <laughs> But you cannot do this. This is bad because you will have vapors coming up. You know what I mean? Hitting the, you know, sparks you're making. Don't smoke. You know, can't have no smoke. No, blah, blah, blah. You know, don't be putting no lighters. Nothing like that. You will, whatever, you know. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go back to stirring this some more. I did also want to bring up this cup inside this bigger cup. You know, there's ice and you know it's slippery. This cup is going to move back and forth. And what the way I stopped that from doing that is I put the ice in first so that it can't move back and forth. The ice is, you know, it's just enough for the ice to fit in there all the way around, right? So when I see the ice starting to move back and forth right like it's floating instead of just sitting here i will take out some of the liquid and put more ice in it so it can't move around and make sure it's adjusted all right then i turn it back on you know what i mean otherwise this cup would i noticed when it melts and it can move it does <laughs> all right so i have the product here this Ziploc bag I've been storing it in each time that I, you know, I stirred this for 72 hours. But each time I take a break, you know, I start for like 10, 12, 16 hours for each day, you know what I mean? It took me about a week and a half to do it though. Um, but each time I was done stirring for the day, I would wrap it up like this, put it in that bag this to keep the light off of it because it will rapidly degrade. And I noticed when I would be done with it, the caking up on top would turn uh, gray. The stuff that was exposed like to the air. And the stuff below would stay um, yellow. You can see it's still a yellow color. Um, but it's a real light yellow <coughs> compared to the yellow that we started from. Um, it's, <coughs> there's barely any liquid in there, but what I'm going to try to do is uh, just filter this out. I'm starting with this paper filter because it's a lot easier. It's not as good, but it will really filter filter quick. These are great for scraping stuff up. Now, there's not even really any liquid on this. It's more like a paste. Let's get a bottle. Now, I'm gonna, I got some clean diethyl ether here. I'm going to wish this out. Let's buy out the weather, make sure I get it all off. You can see it's starting to, now it's starting to come through. I'll do that again when we're Third time. Remember, don't be doing this around flames and stuff. Now I'm just going to wash this. You know, I got to get my product out, which is liquid. So that's it. I'm just going to wash this some more and filter it out. And when I get done, I'm going to 
gonna put this vacuum hose on it. Make sure I get it all out. I'm gonna do this off film so I can, I, the camera's getting in my way. Now this has only been sitting here about 10 minutes. You can see it's already turned yellow to gray, probably the silver. Same way with this cup. Look at how it's gray now. The stuff in here is gray now. It's not yellow. Now here's the silver bromide. You can see it's nice and yellow. Um, when I filtered it like that, you know, after I got done washing it and everything, I stirred it all up and stirred it up and got all the pieces, chunks, and did this to it, you know what I mean? So that I could suck all the water out with the vacuum filters. So anyways, now the stuff that I, the liquid, is over here. I'm distilling it. I got a bigger X column, you know, distillation. It's coming over here. I'm distilling it really slow so that I don't get, you know, I know my my yield is going to be crap because this is a crappy uh, experiment. Um, I also know that uh, I definitely didn't finish the experiment. Probably have to stir it for another day with no cooling it down, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't mind cooled down pretty much the whole time, except for maybe the last five hours. Um... <clears throat> So we're just going to distill this all out, all the low boiling stuff. Remember, do not distill this with a flame. Uh, you want to use a hot water bath with no, no flames or whatever. It's explosive, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you can tell on camera. I wanted to bring this up before I forgot. But the uh, pot does have a yellow tint, not just because I've been eating it, but from the get-go. I mean, it's clear as heck, don't get me wrong but it has a yellow tint. So I'm getting down to the last bit and it's hard to keep it below temp. You can see the boiling point right now is 109. Take that temp a second time. Huh? 116, that's the boiling point of my sugar right there. So that is pretty much all nitrate there, you know, 90%. All right, here's my setup. I switched over to a simple distillation, although I do have a small bigger X column here, somewhat. Uh, so this lines up perfect. <laughs> you can see this is, a, I switched over because I got a, a quartz round bottom flask. It's 50 milliliter, but it's quartz, so it can really take some heat. You can see there's probably that's a 50 milliliter flask. There's probably at least 25 mils in there. Um, but by the time I get done, obviously it's going to be less. Remember, this isn't an, it's not an instructional video. I don't go over all safety concerns. Um, but a lot of people in the last video that I did, uh, they were saying how you should do this under a vacuum. It's a lot safer. Um, and that's true, it is. Um, I mean, I'm not using the vacuum, but it is true, it is uh, safer to do it that way, so I'm going to mention it. Now, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, it's turning black. See, i got some here. That's what I've distilled so far. The still head temperature is about 70 C. The temperature of the boiling flask here is, is 116 Celsius. So my whole point is, Everything from here down, you know, everything in that pot, except for a little bit of the high boiling stuff, is my product. So, I mean, how much is in there, Bob? Uh, it's a little less than half. Half would be 20. Is, hopefully, I'll get 20 milliliters, I'm hoping. I switched over the receiving flask. There's nothing in there yet. Um, but, I don't know if you can see it, but the front came up. It's a new front on there. Don't miss part three and science is great.